now please welcome to the stage Mayor Kate Gallego, Councilwoman Thelda Williams, Councilwoman Deborah Stark, Councilwoman Laura Pastor, Councilman Sal DeCicio, Councilman Michael Nowakowski, Councilwoman elect Betty Guardado, and Councilmember elect Carlos Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Ballet Folklorico Fiesta Mexicana.
Ladies and gentlemen, Fiesta Mexicana. And now for our opening comments, please welcome to the podium, Mayor Kate Gallego. Good morning. We are here to celebrate and welcome two new council members who will help us build a better Phoenix. I can say with confidence, under the leadership of these new elected officials, the future of Phoenix is bright. Today, our city gains fresh eyes and new perspectives to help us create an even better Phoenix. It's not often, as mayor, you get to a mayor gets to attend her own inauguration, and then a few short weeks later is able to welcome two new city council members. But I suppose 2019 is not quite a regular year. It is a year of tremendous growth and change. And now we start a new chapter in making our city a city of for everyone. For those of you who love elections, don't worry, there's another one in August. <laughs> we need and deserve leaders who reflect the very best among our residents. And today we have two such leaders with these new council members. Phoenix is a welcoming city. Neither Betty nor Carlos were born here, but both have made their homes here in neighborhoods that have chosen them as leaders. Carlos Garcia immigrated from Sonora and grew up in Tucson. He eventually made his way to Phoenix, where he has become one of our community's best known civil rights leaders. has never been afraid to speak his mind on behalf of District 8 and our community as a whole. Voters have put their trust in him because he has walked the walk. Like him, they want to create a better future for their families. With the election of these two new council members, Phoenix City Council is now entirely comprised of individuals who are parents. This drives all of us to want to build a better Phoenix for the next generation. Phoenix is also now the largest city in America governed by a mom majority on the city council. <laughs> Betty Guardado, a mother of two, started her, started her career as a hotel housekeeper. Recognizing the challenges facing her friends and coworkers, Betty soon found herself organizing her peers to obtain better working conditions. A consummate organizer and advocate, she eventually made her leadership made her way to a leadership role with the union Unite Here. <laughs> she has lived and breathed the challenges, joys, frustrations, and aspirations of Phoenix's working families. Her new constituents in District 5 know that they elected an advocate who can give their voice to their needs and their resilience. The Phoenix we want is a place where people can come together and realize the dream of providing a better future for their descendants. To get there, we need to work together. That means setting aside any baggage we bring to the table, tuning out distractions, putting our heads down, and getting to work. That is what we are all elected to do, to get things done for the people of our city. And we have a great history on which to build that future. Take, for example, the building in which we are gathered today, the Orpheum Theater. This historic theater was once slated for demolition until community leaders stepped up to save it. They knew then what we know now. Our future is brighter when we remember our past. I have no doubt that these council members ran for just this reason. They want to build a Phoenix for everyone, for those who have been here for generations, for those considering moving here, from those facing homelessness to those starting a new business. The Phoenix belongs to every resident of this city, and we own it. We owe it to all of them to buckle down and get to work on their behalf. I mentioned the roller coaster of 2019 earlier and what a year it has been. And we are not even halfway through. But I say the best is yet to come. 
I look forward to working closely with both of you for your districts and our city. Thank you all for being here today, and congratulations to our city's newest council members. Thank you, Mayor Gallego. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the posting of the colors by the Phoenix Police and Fire Honor Guard. Following the posting of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by David de Jesus Guardardo. Honor Guard, I said, huh? Harry Colors. Over. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for this morning's invocation, the prayer of the farm worker struggle. Please welcome to the stage, California State Senator Maria Elena Durazzo and Arizona State Representative Athena Salmon. Buenos dias, good morning. My name is Maria Elena Durazo, and I am the state senator from California's 24th district. That includes the area in central Los Angeles where councilwoman-elect Betty Guardado grew up. I have known Betty since she was a housekeeper at the Century Plaza Hotel in Los Angeles, and I was president of the Hospitality Workers Union, Unite Here, Local 11. And I am Athena Salmon, State Representative from District 26, which includes Phoenix. I have known Betty since I worked as a bellman at the Downtown Westin Hotel, and she was the president of my union, Unite Here Local 631. Together with Betty, we are three women, all children of immigrants, who have risen to public office from a foundation in the struggle of everyday working people to earn a decent living for themselves and their family. We are standing up here today with several of the workers who have been with us in that struggle and on whose shoulders we stand. For so many of us in Arizona and California, where Betty and I were raised, the farm workers movement, the farm workers themselves, men and women, led by Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, and many other dedicated organizers and activists, they serve as an inspiration in our efforts to lead the way toward a more just and a prosperous future 
for everyone in all of our communities. Please stand with us as we invoke the spirit of those farm workers and of all who fight for social justice by reading Cesar's Prayer of the Farm Workers' Struggle. Show me the suffering of the most miserable, so I will know my people's plight. Free me to pray for others, for you are present in every person. Help me take responsibility for my own life, so that I can be free at last. Grant me courage to serve others, for in service there is true life. Give me honesty and patience so that I can work with other workers. Bring forth song and celebration so that the Spirit will be alive among us. Let the Spirit flourish and grow so that we will never tire of the struggle. Let us remember those who have died for justice, for they have given us life. Help us love even those who hate us, so we can change the world. Amen. You may now be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Barrio First Fellows. fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and protect one another. We must love and protect one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and protect one another. We must love and protect one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Barrio First Fellows. It is now time for Phoenix's new council members to take their oath of office. Please welcome to the stage Arizona State Representative Raquel Tehran, who will administer today's oath of office to Councilwoman Betty Guardado. And please welcome for her oath of office, along with Hector, David, and Santiago de Jesus, and John, Maria, John Jr., Cruz, Manuel, and Isadora Guardado, District 5 Councilwoman Betty Guardado. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Betty Guardado, I, Betty Guardado, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution, and the Constitution, and the laws of the state of Arizona, and the laws of the state of Arizona, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. I defend them against all enemies. I defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the city council member. Of the city council member. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God.
Ladies and gentlemen, Councilwoman Betty Guardado. Now, please welcome Giovanna Renteria, who will administer the oath of office for Councilmember Garcia. And please welcome to the stage, along with his family, Alexis, Chimal, and Yaretsi, District 8 Council Member Carlos Garcia. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Carlos Garcia. I, Carlos Garcia. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. And the laws of the state of Arizona. And the laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies. And defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully and that I will faithfully and impartially and impartially discharge the duties <laughs> discharge the duties of the city council member of a city council member according to the best of my abilities according to the best of my abilities so help me God so help me God Ladies and gentlemen, Council Member Carlos Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium for the first time, Councilwoman Betty Guardado. Wow. Good morning, and thank you all for being here today. I especially want to thank those that made this day possible. First and most important, I want to thank I want to thank my husband, David. God knows he's put up with a lot. It's been, it's been a little bit over six months that we've been out there knocking on doors, talking on voters, and God knows my little David knows the issues a lot better than I do at this point. Thank you, David. <laughs> Santiago probably developed a love-hate relationship with that car seat as well. For all the time he spent in that car seat, and the time that he spent in his stroller knocking on those doors as well. You guys are my inspiration. You guys are my motivation. Without you guys by my side, not exactly sure how I would have done this. I also want to thank my brother John and his wife Maria for being here today and bringing my wonderful nephews. Thank you. My brother got out of work at midnight from Los Angeles, California, and drove all night to be here. It means a lot to me. Thank you. I also want to thank Maria Elena, one of my biggest mentors. I want to thank Athena and Raquel for all of your love, for all of your encouragement through this journey that just was not easy. I also want to thank my union. My union family, especially UFCW Local 99. And of course, you just cannot forget Unite Here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Who throughout my career supported me and my family and everything I have done. 
Thanks finally to everyone else who supported me in this, in this journey. Most of all, I want to thank the voters from District 5 who have trusted in me to be their city council member in the city of Phoenix. Some of you know me better than others. For those who don't know me, I am the daughter of immigrants from Zacatecas, Mexico. <laughs> a lot of fans out there. My father worked as a butcher until I was 11 years old when he had an accident and left him disabled. At that time, my mother went to work cleaning houses and I was in charge of running the home, cooking and cleaning and taking care of my younger and sometimes very difficult brothers. And, and it was not an easy task at 11 years old. The expectations set for me by my family were high and sometimes conflicting. Like many girls, especially Mexican girls, I was supposed to be home, to be the caretaker of my family. But I was also supposed to succeed in school and find a good career for myself. Often, I have found it difficult to live up to those expectations. But overall, I look at it as a challenge. I have tried to push myself forward while also lifting up the people around me to always work as part of a team without getting lost in the crowd. I have tried to be a good daughter and a sister, a loving wife and a mother, a hard worker, a mentor, and a supportive friend to all of those around me. I moved to Arizona in 2007, and since then I have helped improve working standards at five hotels, and for more than a thousand, thousand work food service workers at Sky Harbor Airport. <laughs> at the same time, I have done everything I can to make sure those workers offer the best customer service to visitors to our city. I have helped thousands of people in our city become voters. I have become a vice president of my union and I have mentored dozens of young women like me to build their confidence and find their voices. The workers I have met and the young people I have mentored take great pride in the work they do in this city. They have great hope for, for our future. I find inspiration in them every day. And I, think, and I think they take the same inspiration for me. Last week, I had the chance to speak with a group of parents and students at the Cartwright Elementary School District. As I was leaving the event, one of the parents stopped me and asked me to take a picture with her daughter. She told me that her daughter probably wouldn't have the resources to go to college. She told me that seeing me and hearing my story made her believe that if her daughter worked hard and followed her heart, she would also be able to accomplish her dreams and her goals. I stand here today ready to represent the residents of District 5, but I expect you to roll up your sleeves and do this with me. It's not going to be easy, but I, know that it, but I know that we can do this together. There is so much we need to do. First of all, we have to go back to basics, like I've said throughout my campaign. I have lived in Maryville for 11 years, and I know firsthand the challenges that residents of low-income communities face. We need to fix the lights. We need to clean out our alleys. We need to make sure our streets, our parks, our neighborhoods are safe, accessible, and welcoming. I will do everything I can to work with residents in every neighborhood in District 5 to figure out how we can reach this standard. But there are also broader issues we need to address together with the other residents of, of Phoenix. While our first responders are doing their jobs addressing the needs of our community, we need to make sure those first responders have the resources they, they need to protect our residents in our city. And we need to improve and expand communication between our first responders and the communities they serve. We have some significant issues to deal with in our police department. And I look forward to working with, with Chief Williams 
Mayor Gallego, City Manager Zerker, and the rest of my colleagues on the, on the City Council to address those issues. We also need to address the homelessness issue. The doors that I knocked on every day, most of those workers, most of those voters were one paycheck away from being homeless. And we need to address this issue in a very serious way. We need to do everything we can to create more quality jobs for our residents. And And to make sure the jobs our residents already have pay enough to raise a family, provide adequate health care, and, uh, and be able to save for retirement. Together, this, this is how we will solve the challenges in front of us. On our campaign, I spoke with elected officials from across the political spectrum, business leaders, students, and residents from every neighborhood in District 5 to build a common vision for a better future. It will take all of us working together to face the challenges in front of us and to continue to make Phoenix the wonderful city that it is. I am very humbled and thankful for this opportunity. But more than anything, I am so excited to get to work with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman Guardado. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium for the first time, Councilmember Carlos Garcia. Buenos dias, good morning, y'all. How are you doing? You good? Yeah? All right. <laughs> I want to start by thanking you all for coming. Uh, to my family, my friends, all the supporters uh, who've came out and helped us during the campaign. And to those of you that might just be a little bit curious uh, who these two new council people are that have ruptured the mold of who usually runs and wins office in this town. If you would have told me a couple years ago that this, is, this would be happening, I would have disagreed vigorously. I would have said, and I believed, uh, I would have never have done this. Uh, but now we're here. Tried pinching myself earlier, and I'm still here. <laughs> Not sure if it's a dream or a parallel universe or something else is happening. And, and the reason I say that is, is, is similar, you know, similar to what we heard from Betty. I don't think we were supposed to be here. I wasn't supposed to be here. I was born in another country. I was born in a beautiful little town called Cananea, Sonora, Mexico. Uh, I, was raised, I was raised by an amazing single mother, Cidia, who's sitting right here in front of us. Gracias por todo, tu sacrificio, tu apoyo. I love you, Ma. Thank you for being here. I was also shaped with great influence by, by an extended family, and especially my two grandparents, who now rest in peace, and that's uh, Jesus and Chalita Durazo. Um, I grew up in, in, in South Tucson, like it was said earlier by the mayor, in a place sim very similar to where I live now, working class with a lot of the same issues, that are facing uh, District 8 today. I wasn't supposed to graduate high school, go to college, help start an organization, and support a movement that has changed the course of this state forever. And a movement that allowed what you are seeing here today happen. And if all that is true, I wasn't supposed to be standing here as an elected official, but here I am. Aquí estamos. A 
For the last 17 years of my life, I've been fighting for migrant and social justice. I've had many battles from Arpaio, SB 1070, and so forth. But what I bring most uh, from that experience is my connection and relationship to those most impacted by the decisions that the federal, the state, and the city politics make uh, about our daily lives. That work and this campaign with, couldn't have been done without my partner, Alexis, who's <laughs> over here. We've been together since college. We have grown up together. We've learned to be parents together. We've supported each other uh, on our endeavors. She would set up right now and say, I'm still red for Ed if she could. Um, <laughs> thank you, babe, I love you. Um, my son Chimal, who you met earlier, he's now 12. And my daughter Yaretzi, who was up here, is about to turn three. And in case you couldn't notice, she's the, she runs our house. That's, that's the one that, that's gonna do, do great things. Um, and so everything I do is, is to make sure that they and our future generations have a better life. And with that thought, I also want to take a moment and step back and acknowledge that we are on autumn land. And I ask all of you to consider what that means. It has been said that we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Indigenous elders encourage us to always think of how we impact the seven generations that will come before us or come after us. And so when we decided to take this plunge about 14 months ago, it wasn't a Carlos decision. And some of you in this room uh, joined us in our home and talked about uh, how a campaign could be run differently and what a different type of governance could look like. I'm standing here today in front of you, thankful for all the support, and happy to announce that the first part of that is complete and successful. But <clears throat> it's, it's not only successful because we won, but more importantly, how we won. We built new leadership. You saw the Barrio Fellows up here, they're sitting right here in the fourth row. You saw them up here earlier. And I can't stop smiling and thinking of how proud I am of them and excited to see the impact they're gonna have on our city. And so I wanted to thank you all once again for, for all the hard work and looking forward to see what you can do. Um, Dozens of people were involved and able to learn and be inspired by the work being done by, by the entire team. We will keep all those stories and the time spent together for the rest of our lives. Thank you, team. That was amazing. Um, we also stayed true to ourselves. I've literally been asked time and time again, will you cut your hair? Will you change how you dress? Uh, we were also told not to talk about police accountability or immigration. Yeah. Not, not only did we do those things, but we did it with dignity and pride. We challenged conventional wisdom of what it takes to win a campaign. My grandpa, who I mentioned earlier, would always say, donde quiera que vayas, ve de todo corazón. Anywhere you go, go with a full heart. So today begins that next step. And like we did during the campaign, we're announcing once more, we will be unapologetically progressive. This is who I am. We will create rooms for others and are committing to put people first. It's not just a slogan, it's what we're gonna do. We will stand with that same fist in the air against violence towards our communities. We will fight against criminalization and deportation. But we will also strengthen community with an open hand to build together and to assure that the city of Phoenix is a welcoming place for all, a place that cares about its people 
and does what it should to better the quality of life of all residents. Now that's a lot of work. <laughs> and it cannot be done by one person. And I acknowledge it will take the support of many of you and many people that couldn't make it today to accomplish these things. And so I wanna take the opportunity that we're all here today to introduce the people in our office that will make sure that we are true to this vision. I cannot be more excited to take leadership of these amazing women of color. And I'm honored to introduce the future of the city of Phoenix and the District 8 team, Adriana, Simone, and Jacqueline. Thank you all for sharing this day with us. Thank you. If you know anything about District 8, we are a community that believes in service, giving back, and hard work. When Councilman Garcia shared his vision for the people he wanted working in the office, he wanted the team to represent those same values. People like Jacqueline and Hernandez, who led a coalition that helped to elect the first woman U.S. Senator. People like Adriana Garcia Maximiliano, who has been doing the work to build an inclusive democracy by preparing first and second generation Americans to use their power and potential in elected office. And I've been leading a social justice organization to empower everyday people to transform their communities by building civic power while also focusing on building a leadership pipeline of young black leaders here in the state of Arizona. <laughs> Service giving back and hard work has been what we've seen from Council Member Garcia, who has been a vocal activist for migrant rights, providing support and education to migrant, migrant communities since 2007. We are a reflection of District 8, and after years of having conversations with the community, there's a few things that we know to be true. We want to know that our children can walk without fear, and that our neighborhood streets and parts exist and, peace, and our peaceful places. Every bit as much as we need good, affordable housing and living wage jobs and strong schools. We also want our children to be able to raise their children in this community that will become, and in some ways already is, a model for innovation and sustainable development. We also recognize that for many people, they share a frustration that nothing can change at all or divisiveness will triumph putting the needs over the community. We are aware that we will have to make tough decisions, but we are also aware that being courageous and making tough decisions define what leadership truly is. We will choose to be brave in representing the district and being strong and being a strong voice for the people of District 8. And if you know anything about Council Member Garcia, you know that will be true. With that, I'd like to leave you a quote from Maya Angelou. Courage is most important of all virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. You can practice any virtue erratically, but nothing consistently without change. Thank you. How about one more round of applause for Council Member Garcia and his team. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Miss Marisa Franco. Buenos dias. 
Good morning. As I prepared my remarks for this morning, my job is to close this out, so I'm going to do my best. As I was preparing, I kept thinking about this slogan I heard a while back, and it kept coming to me as I was, as I was preparing, and that is, predict the past, remember the future. I couldn't help but feel nostalgic in this time for this place, for all the things that bring us to the circumstances of this moment. I first met Carlos in 2010 during the whirlwind of SB 1070 in the state legislature. Across the country, people were calling this place the state of hate. My blood was boiling. Um, that moment reminded me, it reminded me of stories my nana or my grandmother used to tell me. She was from Cananea, Sonora. And she would tell me that there would be labor contractors that would go to hire people to come to this land and they came in wagons to clear the desert. She remembered and she was part of a lineage that literally cleared the desert for this city to be built. And here we were generations later, the descendants, the, the, the people that came be after these people who were, we were being treated with discrimination, with hatred and with intolerance. Carlos, you know, when I met Carlos, what that really provided was just a, a kinship um, that continues to this day, and I couldn't be more proud um, of you. Um, we kicked butt and took names, but also Carlos really helped me find political home in my home state of Arizona. And I will say very much more because I will get emotional. But in that fight, what ensued was a costly boycott, legal battles, unprecedented protest, the fight against SB 1070 also birthed a new generation of community leaders and community organizations. Many across the country took inspiration in the courage of the activists of this place. Over the last several years, from the bottom up, this place has been transformed from the state of hate to the state of hope. I want to thank those of you here who contributed, anything you contributed, anything you did, I want to thank you for your service. I want to thank you for your work. We would not be here without you. We still got a long way to go and a lot of work to do. Enter Betty and Carlos, these unlikely political protagonists. And that is precisely what we need. Fresh perspectives and an understanding of the challenges that working people face in this city. Betty. I want to extend my congratulations to you and tell you what a beautiful thing it is to see you in this role. A mother, a domestic worker, like my own mother and like many of you here, a labor leader. Your presence here gives so many people a sense of possibility. And it is not just your presence but the myriad of situations you have navigated, the solutions you have crafted, plainly said it's your leadership that makes a way, inch by inch, that will be a benefit to this council and to this city. Today marks a real shift, a page turns in the story of this place. I hope that as we move forward, we hold the past with us, the parts that warm our hearts, as well as the parts we prefer not to live again. We do this because as we make decisions every day, as this council proceeds in the governance of this city, we hold the possibility of the future. We remember the future and what good it can hold, what potential it can hold, but also be mindful of our origin and the mistakes of our past that we must not repeat. There will be challenges that have not been solved. New problems will emerge. In a time when our federal government grows more calloused and more calcified, an administration that needs no introduction when it comes to the threat it poses to communities in this city. It is at the local level that we can start to craft pr protections, solutions, and set a different tone. We can and should set a contrast to what we're seeing at the federal level, where we have people in government who don't believe in government, people who head up the protection of our environment who don't believe in climate change. people who are responsible for our schools who don't believe in public education. We have seen a gradual dismantling of our government. Unequivocally, we must set a different example and reset the fundamental idea that government must serve the people.
that the residents of this city do not simply need public safety, but also collective well-being, economic security, and opportunity. It is possible. It is possible to look at our challenges, to see through our differences, and decide, what if we lead the country on the question of public education? What if we lead on the question of water preservation, on the issue of policing? and ask how might we do this rather than to let these problems linger in our communities. Why not us? Why not here? We are good enough. We are worthy. <laughs> these community leaders who now serve in elected office have their role. But in closing, I want to remind all of us that we have our role as well. All of us have a story in this place. Whether your roots are thick and sprawling, whether your roots are still trying to catch in this desert land, or whether your roots you just haven't placed in a glass of water hoping to see if they keep growing. Your place matters here. After all we have lived, we're still here. Let's act like it. Let's organize like it. Let's do it. A lo que venimos. Gracias, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Franco. Now it is our pleasure to welcome to the stage for our final performance, Folklorico Itza Matul del Valle del Sol and Mariachi Corazon del Valle.
Guadalajara, Guadalajara. Diana huele a limpia, rosa temprana. Guadalajara, fresca de lío, son mis palomas, tu caserío. Guadalajara, Guadalajara, huele a pura tierra mojada. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for joining us here today at the historic Orpheum Theater. Safe travels and congratulations once again to Councilwoman Guardado and Councilmember Garcia.